All right, what's up there YouTube? Okay, so today I'm gonna go over some things with you guys about how I was wrong. <laughs> I was wrong in that I, I, I made a comment on a post to a YouTuber, on a fellow YouTuber, who said that uh, when the Z9 was coming out, hopefully because the Z6 II and the Z7 II have faster processors, the, or dual processors, that they'll be able to get the same features, you know, focus, focusing better IAF and stuff like that, that's in the Z9. And I said, that's ridiculous, they're not gonna do it. I was wrong. <laughs> I was wrong because what happened was, just like the Z50 exceeding my expectations, I never thought that this little this little camera would be amount to much of anything, and it's a fantastic little camera. I expected the cameras to stay exactly where they are when you buy them. Basically, when you buy a camera, you don't buy it expecting it to do more later especially since they just come out with new cameras later. So why have this camera do more later if it works as advertised, basically, as the reviews come in and everybody goes by the reviews and that's, you get what you pay for. The problem is Nikon released updates for the Z50 and the Z6 and the Z7. The first versions, not the Z7 II and the Z6 II, but this original Z6 has been, had a firmware update. And normally firmware updates just include bug fixes and stuff like that. Occasionally when they first release a camera, they'll say, oh, well, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna add 4K60 to it in a firmware update in a couple months. They did the same thing with the Z with the Z9. Nikon said, we're gonna release the Z9, and then in a couple months, we're gonna release a firmware update in the beginning of uh, 2022 that's gonna add 8K 60 RAW, you know? So, and that is one of the firmwares that's supposed to be coming out. Well, the issue is normally, you can't really trust what these camera manufacturers or any manufacturer says. They tell you they're going to come out with something. You're supposed to buy it based on what it com what it has right now. Well, the problem is, is they've been updating stuff anyway. So, so if they promise to send something, you know, they don't want to get sued. So they're they're not going to make a promise they're, that they can't keep. Well, they they can. Otherwise, if they don't, if they make a promise they can't keep, then they're going to lose customers. I there was a guy, the a, a YouTuber, I can't remember which one it was, but one of the YouTubers said, "Oh, I can't wait because they're going to since the Z62 and Z72 have dual processors in them that they'll be able to shoot, you know, these some of these same features that are shown on the Z on the Z9, the being able to focus on animals, cars, you know, motorcycles, all this different stuff." And I said, "Well, the, the Z9 has a has a, a 10 times faster processor in it, they can't do that. And they wouldn't do that because otherwise, why buy a Z9 if they're gonna have, you know, the same features in a Z7 and Z6 too, Z7 too and Z6 too. Well, I would have thought that before three months ago or two months ago when they came out with the firmware update for these cameras. Now they, they came out with a firmware update for the Z6 and Z7, uh, the original ones, and it said, the firmware said that it would improve eye auto focusing. So with a grain of salt, I'm thinking, okay, it's gonna help it out a little bit. We'll take a look at it. I'll, I'll look at it when I get a chance. I've been busy doing other stuff. I haven't had a whole lot of time to go back through and update the firmware. So, I took the camera and I thought, well, I've got two of these, so why don't I leave the lens on it? I got the 24-70 f4s on this one, the 85 uh, 1.8s that I'm shooting with right now on the Z6 uh, at 4K at 30p. And let me go ahead and just update the firmware. But first, let me take some pictures of some people. Well, my granddaughter, the oldest one, went to Georgia for the holidays, so she I, I, have, I wasn't able to sh uh, take some photos. I did this at Thanksgiving. She went to the holidays for Thanksgiving and I wasn't able to take photos. 
So my daughter and son-in-law brought by my other granddaughter who's four years old, five years old. And if you know anything about four or five years old, you know, little kids like that, they're the perfect, <laughs> the perfect test to a camera's autofocusing and eye autofocus is a little kid that will not stand still. <laughs> they jump everywhere, they bounce everywhere, they don't stand still. You're not, if, you, if you're thinking I'm gonna be able to, you know, get somebody to stand still and it'll be easy to get the shot, you're wrong if you have a four or five year old little kid. I had her in my, in my, in my room and it was a dark room. She was about 10 feet, 15 feet away. And I brought this camera out first with the, with the 24 to 70. I put it on auto, uh, auto ISO, set the shutter speed and the, the, and shed every, set everything to F4. And I started, you know, letting it focus on her eye and see, and it picked up her eye when she got about five feet from me four feet, four or five feet from me. As soon as her face got as big as mine is right now on the thing, then it picked up her eye. But if she, w if I would walk back like this, like about this far, her eye would not, it wouldn't get her eye, it'd get her face. But as she got closer like this, it would pick up her eye when she was about right here, like about the same distance. Her eye would come in focus and that's fine if you're trying to shoot somebody that's directly in front of your camera. So. That's one of the things that was a drawback to these cameras. They weren't really good at eye autofocus. So I didn't use eye autofocus when I'd shoot a wedding and stuff because I couldn't rely on it shooting the eye. I would just put the box over there and if I knew they were coming down the aisle, I'd put the box at about head height and I'd keep it that way and I'd, you know, back button focus and catch the couple as they came down the aisle. And I got good shots that way, but sometimes I'd miss a shot here and there, but then I'd get a couple more shots that were good and then I'd miss a shot and vice versa. So anyway, I try it with her and she's that far and she walks closer. And I did the same thing with the uh, 1.8, 85 millimeter. Stood back a little farther, got her go over. And it was a dark room. It was dark. It wasn't lit like it is right here, right now. It was dark. So I was checking to see what it would look like. And she had to get fairly close to the lens before it would pick up her eye. So then I updated the firmware on this camera first. And then I tried it again. And I'm not kidding. It was a completely different camera. As far away, when I was, when she was back this far, like this, and she was moving around and her head was this big in the frame, it was tiny in the frame, it was picking up her eye immediately. It just went right there and went on her eye. And I thought, well, it's just putting a box and it knows about where her eye is gonna be. But no, it was giving me the arrow to go from eye to eye. You could actually go from eye to eye. Depending on which eye was closer, it would automatically switch. Even that far away, I couldn't believe it. I was like, this is like a whole new camera. I could actually use these cameras the photo of a bride and groom coming down the aisle, usually it's well lit, lit enough, and it would pick them up. And this was in dark, really dark light, low light, very low light. And I was like, wow, this, is, this thing's actually working great. So I did it on the 85, same exact thing. Uh, F 1.8 and boom, it picked up her eye all the way, actually a little further, it picked up her eye because that's a, uh, there's more, that lens gathers more light. So even further back at the same ISO settings, it was picking up her eye perfect in the dim and really dark room. So then I went, we went out into the living room. I turned the lights on in here and opened up the blinds and opened the blinds everywhere. It's nice and bright, sunny day. And it was really bright in this room. And I did the same thing, had her come through the door and way over at the door when she was like this big in the frame, her head was like this big in the frame. It picked up her eye like way over there. And I took photos and shot her coming all the way down. I couldn't believe it when I put the photos in Lightroom and I was clicking through them, zooming in and every single one of them was sharp on her eye the whole way. So it wasn't just a, a, a trick or they didn't just move the box. So Nikon did what Fujifilm and, and a few other brands do. They added features, but they added features to a, a camera that's not even their latest, like they're not trying to sell these. This is a Z6. This isn't a Z6 II. It's a original version Z6. They're not trying to sell this camera. They're trying to sell the Z6 II. And yet they still updated the firmware on this camera, on this old camera that they don't, the first version, 
they improved this camera enough to where I don't really even want to buy a Z6 II. I want to buy, I want to buy, wait for the Z8. That's what I'm waiting for now. Because I was actually considering the Z6 II because sometimes I do have situations where it would be a lot easier to focus and have it focus on uh, the subject's eye as they're getting close to me. Sometimes that would be nice to have that feature, especially after seeing it on the Z9. So when, when I you know, was considering, well, I'll, I'll get rid of these and get like a Z6 II and just get one and keep the Z50 and a Z6 II, maybe I'd buy a ZFC you know, as a second little, you know, gimbal camera or something. But now I'm just going to wait for the Z8. But I'm going to make these videos short and sweet and just let you know that I'm really surprised that Nikon actually did this, that they updated a camera that's not even really, I mean, it's not unsupported, but it's a, it's their first version of this camera that's like four years old. There's no reason. If, if I told you four years ago, hey, Nikon's going to come out with a camera, it's going to be the mirrorless uh, video camera of the year, you'd be like laughing. There's no way. You already got a, Sony's already beating them to the punch. Canon's fixing to come out with a, you know, they're coming out with a mirrorless camera. They're going to smoke them. The Z9 just got the mirrorless camera of the year. Look up here in the link up here, up, up here. I'll leave a card for the video. There's a video because of all the stuff that Nikon just threw in this camera. The Z9 is a fantastic camera. So it has a lot of features that are still better, but I'm going to be waiting for the Z8 after this because if, if, if they can do that to this camera, I can't imagine how much better they can make the, ne the next versions of the camera. Anyway, that's all I want to tell you guys. I was wrong. I told this guy that he was you know, oh, they're not going to do that. They're not going to update your camera. I would be looking for a major firmware update on the Z62 and Z72 here pretty soon that adds more of these autofocus features because they can do it. They have two processors. They can actually do it. I, I, I almost be willing to bet now that they're working on that to give those cameras better features. And what they'll probably do is come out with a Z73 and it will be the high res version, like the 45 megapixels high res version photography leaning camera. And then the Z8 would probably be more of a cinema leaning camera. I don't know. Uh, just seems like that would be a, a logical thing to do because uh, Canon's coming out with a new cinema camera, you know, that's a cinema version for a little bit less than the Z9. And, um, you know, they they all are starting to come out with these cameras. And since the Z9 is so fantastic at video, why not come out with a Z8 that's like a, a video centric Z8 for doing video. Anyway, that's just my thoughts on it. Let me get, know what you guys think. Comment in the uh, down, uh, down below and let me know what you guys think about this and anyway are you happy to hear that Nikon is finally doing what Fujifilm and other camera companies did and that's add features to a camera that's basically obsolete it's their old version of the camera and they improved it so much I mean I'm sh I'm literally I was shocked I was actually shocked I didn't I wasn't gonna make a video about it at all because I didn't think it was that good. I wouldn't have record I would have recorded the back of my screen and let you see this if I if I imagined it being this good. I was just so excited when I tried it and I was like, "Wow." I almost did it for the second one, but then I thought, "Well, let's let's see how this one does too and see if it operates. Maybe it's just the f4 lens because I did the one with the f4 first and I could have just swapped the lenses and tried it, but I thought, "Well, I'll just do the next one and see." And I was I was floored actually. I'm honestly, I was I was I was in shock. So anyway, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't and uh happy new year. Uh merry christmas to everybody and happy new year and if I don't say anything else between now and next year, see you next year. <laughs>